Welcome to Breakfast with Beefcake, Episode 3. What's up, Vaughn? How's it going, man? It's Friday. Man, it's Friday. Well, tell me about it. You feeling good today? I feel great, man. I don't know if I've ever woken up this excited before. I'll tell you why that is. It had a lot to do with something that you said on the last episode when we were talking about, we were kind of comparing problems and how some people have, some people might have a problem that that involves a situation from three years ago that they're turning into a problem, and some people can't get out of bed in the mornings. I've been in that position where I can't get out of bed in the mornings, and I remember about four years ago, five years ago, I was laying in bed. I'm one of these people that anytime that I need something, it's the last thing that I'm ever going to need in my entire life. If you'll just give me this, then I'll never ask you for another thing again. I remember laying in bed in a terrible state of depression and thinking about the three things that I wanted more than anything in my life was to get out of bed before noon. I wanted to want to want to be a father to my children because I just didn't have any motivation at all. And I didn't have any idea how to be a good parent as I sobered up and came back into the world. And I wanted to not cry a dozen times a day. My, my life was just that much of a wreck. Everything was just so dark and negative. And I knew it was going to be like that forever. Man. At the time, that was my Ferrari. That's what I wanted more than anything. That was my that was my mansion, my private jet. You know, when you want something so bad, and if you get that thing, that'll be all that you ever ask for. And typically, I just move on to the next thing. You know, once I'm such a kind of spooled, selfish brat in a way, like we all are. Once we get out of that problem that we swear if we can make it through this, we'll never ask for anything ever again. Right. I came out of that, and I don't ask for very much more. I mean, that that's the one thing that I've held on to. The fact that I am excited about getting out of bed to come talk to you at 530 in the morning, and I'm excited about what the day has in store for me, that's fantastic, man. I just can't ask for anything more. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty that's pretty heavy when you think about it, especially from a perspective like mine where I don't really know what that feels like, you know what I mean? So so it it talks exactly to the point I was trying to make last time about how I get upset and worried about a certain thing when when literally quite literally there are people that can't get out of the bed. Well, I've I've always admired your fascination and your the way that you empathize with people who have those those problems. You've always been interested in in my addiction and my problems, and, and you seem to want to know more about other people who are going through diff- difficult situations because you admittedly have not had those sort of problems, so you really feel for people who are going through that, and you don't want to see people go through that. Oh, yeah. We should probably explore that a little more in the future, but I, I read a lot of stories, like especially on Reddit. I think I've shared that with you before. Like there's there's all kinds of stories on Reddit about people with like just sharing their problems with people. And they're, it's pretty it gets pretty dark. You know, I mean, there there are some people that are really <laughs> in bad places. And I guess I'm kind of interested in helping people get out of those situations, too, or just uh, really what appeals to me the most is seeing somebody like you that overcomes something like that. Well, there's a, there's a, a gift in that. I've heard so many times before, as I'm sure you have, if you go into a room full of people and everybody places their problems in a hat and you get the opportunity to take whichever problems that you'd like, chances are you'll leave there with your own problems. <laughs> right. <laughs> there's some People have some real stuff going on that yeah. I don't want to be locked in that cave. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, zoom out and it, it just, I- even in like a fitness space, like, I just love people seeing people do like overcome things in general and accomplish their goals. You know what I mean? It's it's a cool thing to watch when somebody says, I'm going to go from this place to this place, watch me do it. And then they stick to it and they, they make it happen. It's just inspiring in every way. Yeah. There's a lot to be said for that. And there's also a lot to be said for going from this place to this place in terms of a fitness goal that takes you much further from this place place to this place as far as a a life goal right many times you don't get to hear hear that because you don't even realize how much that fitness goal has changed your life until you look back and reflect on it right but let's get to the the meat of it let's talk about black batman 
Black Batman, <laughs> dude. I, I've been th I've been thinking about Black Batman ever since yesterday when I was in the site, and I didn't read the post until last night, so I didn't know. So I had I had all these funny things in my head about Black Batman because I've kind of gotten into comics lately, like just started uh, learning about the comic book world and superheroes and that kind of thing. And uh, you know, there is actually a Black Batman, a black costume. No, no, no. There is a black Batman. Oh, no, I didn't know that. Yeah, so DC <laughs> Comics, he's called Batwing. He protects Africa. Oh, I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, just thought I'd share that with you. The comic world it must be fascinating because people dive into it and they stay in there. And there seems to oh, be I know. I mean, so much information that I can't even get my head around. It's so fa it, I mean, it's it's so... And crazy that it's a whole world of stories and characters and writers and artists and all these things. It really is fascinating. Well, the only thing I'm familiar with is the mainstream part of it. The same thing that probably anybody who has a television or computer knows anything about. And that's what this blog post was about. What this was in reference to was about four years ago, five years ago, my son Grayson, who's 10 years old now, he was probably five at the time, maybe six. We were having a boys' night over at the house, and we had been going and going and going all day. And so it gets time to go to bed, time to turn the TV off, and he's going to sleep back in the bed with me. When the lights go out and it's time to go to sleep, as is the case for many five- and six-year-old young kids, that's when he starts talking. That's when he's got questions. He's not ready to wind yep. down just yet. And he is hitting me left and right. This question, that question, that question, this question. And I just can't even handle it anymore. I don't have any more answers. And part of me is, is frustrated and tired. And the other part of me is fascinated by what's going on in his head. Because I can just see his cogs just steady churning, steady churning. And so I told him, I said, all right, this has to stop. It's time to go to bed. I'm going to give you one more question before we go to bed. I'm going to allow you one more question. And he says, okay. And he starts to jump into that question. I said, wait, 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 wait. I want you to think about this question because it's the last one that you're going to have for tonight. So I want you to think <laughs> about what's concerning you at this moment more than anything else. What is it that you'd like to know? And he starts to go into it. And I said, ah, think about it. And he, he lays there for a moment and he nods his head. And I said, ready? And he said, ready. I said, what's your question? He said, Daddy, if you were Batman, would you wear the black suit or the blue suit? And I said, the black suit, Grayson. And he said, me too, Daddy. Good night. And he rolled over and he went to sleep. Now he was out. And he was gone. And in that moment, I just stopped and I thought that was the most important thing in his life at that time. That was it. He couldn't, yeah, he didn't have anything else that he wanted to know. He didn't have anything else. And I think it was important for me not to discount that, that that's no more or less important than any of my fears or, or concerns or beliefs, that that is as valid as anything that, that I worry about before I go to sleep. You know, you see people that are worried about, that are just concerning themselves with ridiculous things that don't have anything to do with, with anything other than the color of their Batman suit. Right. You know, you watch the news and you write down what people are upset about and angry about and what they're, what they're worried about. And it's as fictional and comical as anything having to do with Batman. Right. So some, some Olympic swimmer makes up a story in the Olympics and it gets everybody outraged outraged out, as if they are a part of that, you know, as if stories don't get made up all the time, you know, but we attach ourselves to that. I think it's one thing to, uh, to attach ourselves to positive, good things out there in the world. I mean, attachment is definitely has a great deal to do with why we're here, but why are we so sucked into attaching ourselves to anger and burning people at the stake? You know, there, there has to be someone at fault and, we have to jump on this bandwagon of, of hate. It's crazy. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. You can choose to get upset about things or look for things to be upset about, or 
you can choose to look for things to be excited about and be happy about. A lot of people would rather be angry. What do you think that is? Do you think that they would rather be angry or do you just think that they have become so accustomed to it that they don't realize that they're making the choice to be angry? I, I see a lot of people uh, around here, like uh, especially, I mean, I don't know if it's especially in the South, but just where where I live, I don't think they realize it. Like, I think they're just like, that's they just become this thing because I, I don't think they pay attention to it. I don't think, I was, I was never aware of it. I've been pretty angry, I guess, most of my life. If not in an angry state, I was certainly ready to pop off. You know, I, I, was, I was happy plenty. You know, I've had a great life growing up, and I had plenty of happy times. But looking back, I was always quick to anger. Often there was periods where I was just angry all the time, usually when I was at the periods where I was most out of shape or overweight. I would just kind of become angry at everyone. I don't think people pay attention to it. Like, was there a point where you decided that you were going to pay attention to what you were doing and why you were doing it? No. You know what I mean? No, there was no, I didn't see a problem. I didn't see, I, I just couldn't see why everybody else wouldn't act right in my head. You know, this was not a me problem. This was a problem of, of society. Uh, and it never occurred to me to step back and say, you know, maybe I'm an asshole. Maybe that's what's going on here. And yeah, and I tell yeah. people jokingly, the world really straightened up after I went to rehab. Everybody started acting right. And that's because that's when I turned to myself and started looking at some of the things that I focus on and some of my habits and some of my patterns. And they were all pretty unhealthy. Watching the news for someone like me is, is not healthy. Reading the newspaper and, and reading about doom and gloom and, and hate and chaos and confusion, that's not for somebody like me. Right. I guess that's what I'm getting at. Like, I don't think it's good for anybody, but I don't think anybody, I don't think your average person thinks about things that way. I don't think most people step back, are able to step back and look at things that way. Well, I think that self-awareness is hard to come by. When I hear right. people that are self-aware, when I hear people step back and kind of analyze situations from a third-party perspective, even when they're involved in it, when they can have a conflict with someone else and they're capable of, of stepping out of that conflict and looking at both themselves and the other party, they just have a, I have an attraction to them. I think that is so awesome to watch people be aware of, of what's going on. Those are the people that I want to learn from. Have you ever caught yourself in a situation like that where you are the one that's aware of a problem and the other person is like super upset or frustrated? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's happened to me over the last couple of weeks. I was just sitting here thinking about it. That's very interesting. It's like to where you, to where you're like, like, so what, how do you behave in that situation where someone like expects you to do something, but you're like, I, I don't need to do that because that's not what you need. And that's not what I need to do. You're observing the situation. Do you say something to that person or do you just let it go? Most of the time I, I find that usually when I'm in a period of, of conflict with someone and I'm standing there kind of talking to myself from the outside looking in, what I keep repeating to myself is, shut the hell up. Like, Wilson, don't say anything. Usually my right. best course of action is just not to say anything, especially when I'm in the moment. Because when I'm in the moment, the first place that I go to is the hair sticking up on the back of my neck. And the only way that I really know how to solve conflict is to get angry and blow up. And hopefully the other person will cower down and, and do what I want them to do. And everybody knows that's not the way to handle a situation. Right. And taking a deep breath and just telling myself to take it easy, that usually helps. In, in reference to the, the media and stuff that you see on TV and people wanting to feel a certain way, I think that conflict gives us some that adrenaline. You know, I like conflict from the standpoint that if I'm going to be a little bit angry, I want to be like really angry. I, I, right. I can remember in my in my worst days hearing something break and hoping that whatever broke was expensive because that meant I could get really mad. 
if a, if a check was written that I didn't know about, I hope it bounces. So I have a reason to be just firing mad because I don't want to be a little bit upset or a little bit off. I want to be raging because that changes the way that I feel. And, and I like that. And I think that that's what you see with people who are strongly opposed to some things in the, in the news that are going on in society that I look at and think, wow, I can't believe that you would waste your bandwidth, your energy, your life uh, strongly no, opposing yeah. something. You understand what no, I'm saying? I Man, I, I know exactly what you're saying. Like there's no other there's no other thing in their life that gets them fired up. So there's they need that something. Right. Right. And and I think that that's a sign that that there's potential there. You know, there's good potential, but it's just sort of misplaced. You know, I don't feel right. I don't feel strongly opposed to anything enough to go downtown and 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 march you know, or go somewhere and and (laughs) protest. And I'm not saying that that's right to be a, I guess to some degree I'm a pacifist or I just don't give a fuckingist or or whatever you want to call it. But I I see some people that I think I can understand. I'm just using an example. I'm not trying to get on any one topic because I, I really just try to not, I stand for nothing, if that makes any sense. I don't care what people believe in. But I can see where somebody would protest for gay rights, something they believe in and they're passionate about. And that's that's them. That's part of their identity. And that's what they that's what they believe in. It's harder for me to understand somebody that would take the time to protest against it. Does that make any sense? Oh, yeah, it makes perfect sense. Like I I can see where somebody protests for something, whatever that something is for whatever it is that they believe in. And I have a harder time seeing myself saying, honey, let's get up off the couch and go down there and, and protest against this thing that just is. You know, I'm, I'd, I'd rather sit here and eat another bowl of ice cream or go to the gym and do something, but I'm not going to waste my time and anger over something that I'm going downtown to picket or to protest. And I know with that, comes anger so i'm gonna go do that right that's just negativity i I think that's what you're saying if i'm excited about something and i think something needs to be needs to change i'm gonna go and support that but if that thing for me makes you angry and you get pissed off about it and you want to go down and set me on fire or whatever (laughs) you're, you're you're acting out of negativity right that's correct and i i think it's the same I think it's a means to the same end. I guess my point is I think that the positivity and the negativity are both going in the same direction. They're both for people to fulfill themselves and have that, that adrenaline and those endorphins and feel that rush. And it's, it's all a need of, it's a desire to be loved and accepted because that's what everybody wants at the end of the day is to be loved and accepted. And I think that some people just have, healthier ways of going about that. And other people don't know how to go about that properly. And most of my life, it's just been a, I've been a a shining example of just not knowing any better, not knowing how to, how to do things in a positive light. Everybody's like that to some degree. I think so. I mean, it just takes time to, to pay attention. And like you said, be aware. Well, and it just seems like we're only afforded a certain amount of concerns you know, I mean, we can, we only have time to worry about so many things. I, I try to crush as many worries and concerns into one red light as possible. I'll start thinking about something and then I'll, I'll snowball one little problem and, and make it into a bunch of, of problems that just sit on my head, like a, a huge mm-hmm. pile of, of dung that weighs a thousand pounds. <laughs> But I think that the point of, with Grayson, his concern being what color Batman suit am I going to wear, I think it's important for me to realize what my concerns are when I go to sleep at night. You know, are the concerns that I have things that I can do something about? Are they concerns that I am interested in from a growth standpoint? Or are they concerns that provide me with anxiety and suck my energy and make me a less happy person. And at the end of the day, I can't change them anyway. 
Right. So you shouldn't be wasting time on them. That's right. And I have a rule that I kind of put into play uh, about a year ago, and that is no negative thoughts at the end of the night. When I get ready to go to bed, when I get in bed and get ready to go to sleep, it's all ridiculously positive, obnoxiously positive. It's like daydreaming. It's like telling, uh, reading a, a child a, a fairy tale book. That's what I do when I close my eyes at night is I go into some fantasy land and just dream about what I want my reality to be. And that's why you wake up so excited every day. I think that's part of it. It's hard not to wake up excited when you have Vaughn Rawls on the other end of the telephone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got to get you some intro music, man. I was thinking today, I was like, I'm just picturing Vaughn like busting through the, the WWF doors or something <laughs> while the phone's ringing. And then you pick it up and I need a button where I can go. Dar, da, dar, dar, dar. <laughs> right at the last minute, I fly in and <laughs> land, on the mi- land on the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, all right. We got a big day today. We got Friday. We got the weekend Uh, coming up. It's going to be good, man. Let's do it. All right. Good talking to you, man. All right, buddy. Bye.